Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, Ameritech nursing graduates, families, and friends. Today is a great day, and one that we look forward to with each graduating class. This ceremony is called the Pinning and Candlelight Ceremony, which will be followed by graduation. As we prepare for each graduation and pinning ceremony, we are often asked, what is the Pinning and Candlelight Ceremony? And why do we do it? So I'm going to briefly describe what the ceremony is for the pinning, and we will have Joyce, our faculty uh, speaker, describing uh, the significance of the candlelight. Again, we refer to the most famous nurse in modern history, Florence Nightingale, who began a pinning ceremony in the nursing school that she founded in London. This was the first modern school of nursing, and it was founded in uh, by her in, in the 1860s. However, Nightingale was not the first to give a ceremonial pen to those who served the sick and wounded. The history of the pinning dates back to the 12th century during the time known as the Crusades. This was a lengthy time of bloody battles that left hundreds of thousands of soldiers wounded. Amongst the group of wounded soldiers were the Knights of the Order, these crusading knights were so grateful to anyone that would tend to them and help them heal their wounded. Their gratitude led them to devote themselves and the rest of their lives to good works, which included tending to all the ill and the wounded. Each of the knights took a lifelong vow to serve the sick. Each knight was presented with a Maltese cross that, was not only, that not only symbolized their Christian beliefs, but it also was a symbol of Medal of Excellence. Nightingale re recognized that this historical event and wanted to replicate it by presenting her nursing students and graduates with similar Medal of Excellence, and that began the first painting ceremony. Graduates, you are the nurses that Nightingale had envisioned to transform healthcare over 100 years ago, when she wrote in the 1880s that it would take 100 to 150 years before education and experienced nurses would arrive to change the healthcare system. You have now arrived to help transform healthcare and carry on Nightingale's vision to create a healthier world. Today, we follow the footsteps of Nightingale as we present each, with, each one of you with your own medal of excellence in the form of a nursing pin. It is our hope as nursing faculty, that each one of you receive your nursing pin, that you will commit to the practice nursing of, with excellence, providing exceptional care that will facilitate health and in healing all those you serve. Be mindful of those who have courageously gone before you. Express gratitude for those who have helped you to reach this point in your life. We have shared with you what we know in the art and the science of nursing. It is now your turn to share your gifts and healing influence with others. Congratulations on this accomplishment. Our program today will proceed as outlined. We will begin with our student speakers, Caleb Osher, followed by Megan Mitchell. Our concluding speaker will be Joyce Johnson. Following her comments, we will proceed with our pinning ceremony, followed by the nursing pledge, which will be led by Rich Martin, and concluding and concluding will be the candlelight ceremony. Yeah. Can't do any of that on weekends 
and I draw that for a couple of years. <laughs> but I get to you guys, we have time to get. Um, I think it was third semester, we, we had that list that said, you know, here are all this, these stressors, the list of stressors, and each one of them had a numerical value next to it. And so you go down, you check off your stressor, and then you add it all up at the end, and it said, you know, if you got 120, you have 50% chance of getting sick, or if you had 280, you have 70% chance of sick. Thomas is, I think, said he was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to review a couple of those on there. And so if you guys could just raise your hand, give the Joyce wave. Um, if, if any of these apply to you during, during your time in nursing school, okay? And just because they're stressors doesn't mean it was bad, okay? You know, they're, some of these are just beautiful, amazing events in our lives, but they can still be stressful. So uh, how many of you or your spouse got pregnant during the... During our, during our <laughs> um, how many of you had a baby or your spouse had a baby during nursing school? Okay. <laughs> How many of you got married during nursing school? <laughs> Thomas, just keep your hand up. <laughs> right? um, seriously, uh, how many of you had to move during nursing school? <laughs> how many of you had to replace a car during nursing school? <laughs> I told you to keep your hand up. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about that list, and, and here's my list. This is the yin to that list yang, okay? Um, how many of you have support from family and friends? How many of you made an exceptional friend out of the classroom? How many of you made more than one? How many of you felt supported by your classmates? How many of you couldn't imagine doing this without this group of people right here? I am so very proud to be a part of, of this group, this cohort. Um, just extremely proud to be a part of you guys. Um, we laid our nursing foundation together, and the friendships, the kindness, the humility, the grace and the laughter have already started to shape the futures of our nursing careers. We'll take parts of each other, of our experiences together to our patients, and the culmination of these will calm the nerves of a parent, they'll bring laughter into the room of a frightened team, they'll provide a, a shoulder for some to cry on after they've lost a loved one. We will be able to stand tall and be an advocate for a patient that cannot stand tall and be an advocate for themselves. Once again, I'm just I'm so proud to be a part of this group and to take each and every one of you with me to my patients. Um, as I would uh, sit at my desk at night, you know, studying, I, we'd get distracted by, you know, cats on YouTube. <laughs> whatever, and, and I would have to bring myself back in. So I had this quote that I had up at my desk. I had two of them. The first one was by John Burroughs. And John Burroughs said, For anything worth having, one must pay the price. The price is always work, patience, love, self-sacrifice. No paper currency, no promises to pay, but the goal of real service. We've only started to pay. We've dedicated ourselves to the service of others. Our foundation has been poured. Now it's time to build that foundation, to build upon it. And I, I urge you guys to continue to build upon it. And I urge you to hold me accountable to that as well, and hold each other accountable to that. This leads me to the other quote that I had at my desk. This was by Ludwig van Beethoven. He said, don't only practice your art, but force your way into its secrets. For it and knowledge can raise men to the divine. We've chosen a career that can be explored for many lifetimes and still leave us in awe. So force your way into its secrets. Strive for the divine. I will miss all of you dearly. I already do. I can't wait for our paths to cross again, and I know that they will. Um, I'm just so thankful that you guys were a part of this chapter of my life. So thank you.
Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off in the way. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own. <laughs> and you know what you know, which is also terrifying. <laughs> and you are the guy who will decide where to go. You will look up and down streets, look them over with care. About someone will say, I don't choose to go there. We are delivery. <laughs> <laughs> your head full of brains and shoes full of feet. You're too smart to go down any not so good street. And will you succeed? Yes. Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. You're off to great places. Today is your day, and the mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bear with me because public speaking is not much fun to see. I figured if I could read from Dr. Seuss, then I'd be in pretty good shape for the rest of this. <laughs> I'm very honored uh, to be chosen to speak today at this incredible moment in our journey. I thought about this, this speech for a little while and I wanted it to be motivational. And as I thought about it, I realized that you guys were a part of my motivation to continue with school. Um, when I was ready to quit or I got frustrated or upset, you guys always had my back. And you were pulling me along to get me through, and I'm thinking for that. The miles driven, the gallons of coffees and other beverages consumed, the time spent at school, clinicals and lectures, and the countless hours of studying, the tears that were shed that may or may not have been our own, the times that we were not able to be with our loved ones, we became a family. We made it through nursing school to the very end. You guys are an incredible group of people that I like to call friends. As we part ways to catch up on the people, places, and things that we've missed, the chores that didn't get done, and the adventures that we have wanted to take, I pray that you will not lose your determination and drive that I've seen from you all here at school. We will have difficult shifts, and we will have fantastic ones too. We will save lives, and we will lose some. We will console loved ones and take care of our own. We will celebrate new life, and we will comfort those who need it. We will offer warm beverages and a listening ear. We will smile and laugh and cry with them. We will be advocates and encourage them along, just as you did with me. We will make a difference every day that we work even if we don't feel like it. The places you'll go and the people will meet will hopefully have brains in their head and shoes on their feet. <laughs> and if they, if they don't, that's okay too. We'll take care of them. You guys, we're nurses now. We made it through. Congratulations. Of her birth, 
She was born into a wealthy family and had what would be considered a privileged life. She was educated at home and her interests were in math and, science and medicine. At the time when women in England were rarely educated or allowed to participate in medical field, Florence learned five languages as well as history, philosophy, and mathematics. She began to visit the poor but became very interested in looking after those who were ill. She visited hospitals in London and around the country to investigate possible occupations for women there. However, nursing was seen as employment that needed neither study nor intelligence, and nurses were not highly revered. In 1853, she became the superintendent of the establishment for the gentle women during illness in London. In 1854, Florence was recruited by the Secretary of War, Sidney Herbert, to join the efforts of the Crimean War. She and 28 other nurses were sent to Turkey, and Turkey Florence implemented sanitary reform, which dropped the death rates from 42 to 2 percent. She was deeply shocked and appalled by the living conditions in the military hospital. In these conditions, it was not surprising that in army hospitals, war wounds only accounted for one in six deaths. The majority of victims succumbed to diseases such as typhus, cholera, and dysentery. Angered by the deaths she saw in Turkey, Florence issued a report, notes on matters affecting the health of the British Army. In 1858, the Royal Commission, uh, to the Royal Commission, she also set up a nursing school in London in 1859 where sanitary practices were taught. During the Civil War, the Union Army contacted Florence to help with field medicine. Her recommendations led to the uh, forming of the United States Sanitary Commission. Florence and her team of nurses were able to create ch changes that brought the hospital into much better order. She established a vast kitchen and laundry. She looked after the soldiers and their wives and their children. She was on her feet for 20 hours a day, and the nurses working with her were also overwhelmed. She was the only woman allowed to be in the wards after eight at night, and, and to the wounded men, she became known as the Lady of the Lamp. She, as she would walk around carrying a lamp to light her way as she checked on the wounded and ill. By her death in 1910, at the age of 90, Florence Nightingale had started her own nursing school, revolutionized patient care and initiated the transformation of nursing into a respectable and important profession. The image of Florence with lamp in hand held aloft to light the way, revealing unmet needs, deeply determined, guided by both passion and science, is one that remains relevant to nurses today. We too can make our own unique contribution to health care. Just as Florence Nightingale brought the enlightenment to the possession of the nurses in the 19th century, the passing of the candlelight is symbolic of the passing of knowledge from one generation to the next. As you receive your pen today, know that you have worked hard and deserve this badge of honor. Continue to wear this pen with pride. I am very proud to be a nurse. I've been a nurse for a lot of years. And I am grateful to have had the opportunity to teach what I know to these wonderful, wonderful students. I will miss terribly. So I love you all. I wish you the best. You are my co-workers now. I love you. <laughs> to go and teach, so she's exiting stage left. <laughs> now we will proceed to our beginning ceremony. What we will have is our students will come up row by row, come over here where they will give a card and their name will be announced. If we have family members who are registered nurses who are going to be pinning our, our graduates, we would like as soon as you see them stand up to come over here to my right and wait for your name to be called. And once it's called, if you will please come across the stage safely, there are two red marks. Pin your graduate, and then turn and look uh, for Stacy, who will have a camera, click, and then please come over and escort your, your graduate to the stage.
to the podium. Okay, we will begin now. Michelle Peterson.
Liston. Cindy Utley. Allison Lee Law Roberts. And she's being given by her mother, Ginger Law. <laughs> Mackenzie Eddie Walker, and she's being picked by her mother, April Eddie. Sonia Nicole Scow. <laughs> Shelby Ann Belknap, and she will be pinned by her aunt, Valerie Belknap. Brooke Webb. <laughs> Kylie Marie Haskell. Megan Leela Short, and she'll be pinned by her mother, Kelly Peterson Short. Rebecca Brett, and she's being pinned by her sister, Alyssa Anderson. Dulce Cisneros. Amy K. 
Kennedy. Rebecca Means, and she's being pinned by her mother-in-law, Catherine Reed. Stacy Elliott. Mallory Lene Bowden. Abid Bahadur. Walter M. Durchy, and he's being pinned by his mother, Amy Durchy. Jody May Mary Hollis, and she's being pinned by her father, 
Brian Charles. Allison Taylor Shepherd, and she's being pinned by her mother, Lorna Davis. Tatiana Sanderson, and she's being pinned by her father, Mark Sanderson. <laughs> Stephen Michael Kelsey, and he's being pinned by his mother, Marjean Kelsey. Alicia Criddle. Yara Defieri Layton, and she's being pinned by Andy Huso. Jessica Lee Rickley. Zachary Brown. <laughs> P. Humiston. win.
Corey J. Otteson. Adriana Ashley, and she's being pinned by Margaret Warner. Chantel Cox. <laughs> Shelby Higgins. Michaela Lynn Peterson. <laughs> Caitlin Rose Ferner, and she's being pinned by her mother, Jennifer Byron. Mackenzie Southwick. <laughs> Chanel Gates, and she's being pinned by her mother-in-law, Kathy Johnson. Casey Joyce Jackson. <laughs> Alexis Neff, and she's been pinned by her by Brayden Patton. I'd like to invite any nurses that would like to renew their pledge. If you could please stand. Okay. After me, I solemnly pledge before God and in the presence of this assembly to practice faithfully 
my profession of mercy, I will do all in my power to make and maintain the highest standard of practice of my profession. I will hold in confidence all personal matters. I will devote myself to the welfare of my patients, my families, and my community. I will endeavor to fulfill my rights and privileges as a good citizen and take my share of responsibilities in promoting the health and welfare of my community. I will constantly endeavor to increase my knowledge and skills in nursing and to use them wisely. I will zealously seek to the nurses whomever they may be and wherever they are. I will be active in assisting others in safeguarding and promoting the health and happiness of mankind. Marantech College graduates, it is with much pleasure and joy today and with our deepest appreciation that we congratulate you and welcome you as colleagues into the nursing profession. at which time we will need the graduates to assemble in the back with their caps and gowns for graduation ceremony, which will begin at 5.30. Again, congratulations. <laughs> 